What's going on guys, it is Sam and in this tutorial what you're going to be learning is how to 3D motion track text into a scene using After Effects and Cinema 4D. Now I learned this technique quite a while ago when I used to edit Call of Duty montages and I've kind of had it in the back pocket since then and haven't really had a chance to use it until recently when I started shooting real estate. So this is a perfect example of where you can use it um, in those luxury real estate videos. I know a lot of people use 2D track text and this is a way you can bring a lot more production value and show a lot more skill than your competition. It's also great to use in any personal projects that you might have as well. Um, so lots of uses and this is an example of what you're going to be learning in this video right now. I want to go where the lights are low and the dreamers are chasing. I want to live like we don't know much but we know we're going to make it. So guys, you're going to need After Effects and Cinema 4D, like I said, but you're also going to need a clip that you want to add the motion track text to. So this is what I'm using, um, and feel free to download it in the description below if you want to follow along using the same clip as me. But any clip that you guys have should work, it just needs a couple of things. So some tips to get a nice shot like this where it's easy to track is you want to stop down your lens, so you don't really want anything out of focus. You want it contrasty as well. So even though I shot this clip in log, I've gone ahead and added a LUT back to it to make it nice and contrasty so the program can pick up some tracking point. And you also want to use a high shutter speed as well. Um, if there's motion blur, it might be difficult for the program to pick up tracking points as well. So with those three things, um, you should be pretty good. Obviously, the higher the resolution as well, the more detail and the more points the program can pick up on too. Um, this was originally a 6K Blackmagic RAW clip, uh, but just for tutorial purposes sake, I have made a 1080p version. It's easier for you guys to download and it's quicker for me to render um, and track for the tutorial point. Um, but since everything else in the clip follows those tips that I said, it'll be very easy for the program to track. Um, from there, you also want to render a JPEG sequence out. So basically, each one of these frames is a frame from the film. Just do that in Premiere or whatever uh, program you like to use. But once you have both of those, then we're ready to start. And we're going to double click in this project file and import the clip. clip. So as you can see, we've got this clip in here with 1920 by 1080 and at 25 frames a second from in Australia. This was taken from a 6K Blackmagic. Um, the B-Raw clip, I rendered out a little 1080. Obviously, it would track a lot nicer in 6K. There would be a lot more data for it to pick up. It will just take too long for this tutorial, so I've gone ahead and done like a little 1080. I've already tested it. It works great, and we'll come into this tracker window here. If you don't have that, come up to Window, Tracker, and go ahead and click Track Camera. Now, this is going to take a little while, but what it's going to do is figure out where the camera was and how the camera moved, and then we're going to help it kind of figure out where the ground is once it's done. So let's let this finish. Uh, we're already up to 20 frames of 363. Shouldn't take too long. Um, but once it's done, you'll see it solving the camera and then I'll show you how to tell the program where everything is. Cool guys, so as you can see, it solved the camera and now we have all these little points if I hover over and they're making these little triangle sections. So what I'm going to do is quickly scale up the track point size so we can see them a bit better and I'm holding shift to do it very quickly. You can see we've got all these track points all through the clip that kind of show you a 3D built version of the scene. And like I said, with the contrast here is where it picks it up. So obviously if this clip had more contrast, these little bricks would probably have some more tracking data too. But now what you want to do is tell the program where the ground is and the, make a plane of where you want to sit the text. So obviously I want mine sitting on this driveway, so I'd pick something like this. But if you wanted it on the house, you could pick one of these up here or one of these up here really depends where you want to place the text. Um, but this is a great spot for me. So I'm going to firstly go and set the ground plane and origin, and that'll tell the 3D program where it should be. And then I'm going to go ahead and do it again and create solid and camera. Now what most people do in that instance will go create a te 3D text and they'll just do an easy little 2D text tracked in um, I've done this a couple of times, but if you want to take your production value to the next level, we're going to do one more step, which makes the nice 3D text. Um, but as you can see, this is nice and tracked in. 
and it's not going anywhere it looks like it was there on the day it doesn't look realistic with lighting but it's tracked in properly so now what we're going to do is we're going to um, come up to file you have to save your project first and then I'm going to come to export Maxon Cinema 4D exporter boom hit OK and I'm just going to call this motion track cool so basically what we just did is exported the camera track data that we just made and now we're going to open up Cinema 4D and we're going to go file merge and I'm going to import this motion track that we just did now Cinema 4D, if you've never used it, we've got our 3D camera in and we've got our solid that we just made. But you can see the origin here, it's not aligned properly. So what we're going to do firstly is come to X down here in the position and our Y in the position and now it is aligned properly. And if we click this, we go into the camera view and if we hit play, we will export this out. We will start to see what the camera did, which is panning down and left exactly like it did in the project now before we go too far we want to edit our render settings so this needs to be 1920 by 1080 just like it was in the thing and the frame rate needs to be 25 and we want this to be all frames for the frame range um, so that's the render settings but we also need to change our project settings to the same thing so hit this to 25 boom and now this should be the exact number of frames and we won't have any glitches like you saw before. So let's hit play again. Boom, panning down and to the left. Perfection. Great, cool guys. So now we can start um, making our text and everything. So first thing you wanna do is firstly we can set a background right and this is where the uh, JPEG sequence will come in handy that we talked about earlier so we want to come in here and we want to make a matte uh, material click on our JPEG sequence boom no click on this again we want to go to animation hit calculate turn off specular and now we have our background that we can chuck on here and if you watch We've got our plane tracked perfectly. Good to go. So now we're going to delete this because we don't need that solid. And first thing we're going to do is we're going to remake it in Cinema 4D with this plane. And we click on here and we can scale it up. And I'm going to just rotate it to be proper. And just move it over to the right a little bit. So basically just rebuilding this driveway. And you think when we hit this render button, like we've just got this ugly plane, we're gonna go ahead and drag this on again. And we're gonna change this projection to flat. We're gonna come up here and we're gonna add a Cinema 4D tag, compositing, click compositive background. And now this will just go straight through. Yeah, it should be. What have I not done properly? Oh, not flat, frontal, there we go. Boom. Now it just looks like the background, but we've got a floor that will start receiving shadows. So now we can go to Mode Graph, Mode Text, and this is going to need a, quite a lot of scale. Scale it up. And now we can start designing our text. Um, so guys, these are move, move around, scale up and down, and rotate. So, boom. Add another two on these so we get a bit of depth. Tutorial, boom. And you want to change the font to something nice. So let's go to, whoop. That's not what I meant to do. Go down to Typograph Pro, one of my favorite fonts. And now we just kind of reposition it in to the scene how we would like it. So I might do a bit of an angle and place it in like this and just make sure it's sitting down on that nicely boom and now we look at it and we're like okay great this looks still terrible sam what are we gonna do 
we come in here and I want to just tweak the text a little bit we'll make it a bit tighter make it fit a bit better and we want to come to caps fillet caps and that'll just kind of round out these edges a little bit right get up a little bit and we come to our render settings now this is where we start working a bit of magic ambient occlusion and global illumination chuck both of those on and we'll have a look still nothing because we need some lights now if you look at the scene you got to match the shadow to the um to how it is in the actual scene so you can see the sun is probably up over here which is what i'm doing with this light turn on the shadows shadow soft i'm going to make the color a bit more red and lighter let's have a quick look at this now that shadow is way too red and it's way too like coming towards us so we need to move this shadow this light back towards us a little bit more and more towards black have a look so already get in there already doing nice move it up turn it down a little bit and even add a second light to the front to kind of lighten up the front But we'll turn the intensity of this one down. You kind of just rebuilding how it looked on the day. See, that's already looking pretty nice, but I might move this one back a little bit, bring a little bit more to the front. Starting to look pretty good. bit in here and then to make it look like it's actually there we need to add a texture to the text so I'm going to come in here and I'm going to right click on this ball and go down to object GI which I like um, add a reflection tick that on turn it down quite a bit but that's going to reflect some nice things boom drag and drop that onto the text Okay, you can see it's starting to reflect some things. And what I'm going to do is add a sky, and on the sky we can add this as well. Oh, on the sky one actually because it makes it very big. We want a second mat. We want to come into here and we want to turn the blurring up to 55. Say on both. Boom, boom, add that to the sky now, and we want this to be projection frontal. We don't want a viewable by the, yeah. You can see we're getting a bit of sky reflection now as well. So that is looking very nice, and that is looking like it's actually there. And if we go through here, boom, 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 boom looking good so very quick we are looking very nice I'm not too sure what happened just there with the sky but I think it was just a little glitch with the sky box yeah I think the end of our frame is down here so it won't show up what we can do a quick look looks fine now we want to save this I'm going to call it motion track to AE. Boom. Open up AE again, and we're going to double click. And we are going to find that project. Boom. Now, you can see that it's only showing the tutorial. And you want to go to final. And even still, it's only showing this section. Now, the reason this is, is because you want to come back to it, right click interpret footage main and you want to go ignore boom tutorial bing bam boom you are done and now you can just go ahead and render this out 
I hope you guys enjoyed that tutorial. I'm definitely going to be posting some more and making at least one a week on this YouTube channel. So comment below if you have any requests and hit that subscribe button and you'll see all the tutorials I'll be posting in the coming weeks. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks again, guys.